Hey guys, it's live in the studio with Lena. Thanks for joining me today. If you stay tuned after this break, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this really pretty back to basic stencil that's personalized. So be sure you stay tuned. Okay guys, thanks so much for staying tuned. I'm so excited about what we're gonna be doing here today. Um, and just as a reminder, if you've been here before and as a tip in case you haven't, in the comments below, Noelle always puts a link to our website that's gonna show you all the tools and items I use from our store. Um, it's just gonna be a link to all of those in one easy collection for you so you can shop what we're doing today. Also here at Studio Arch, I've been mean, working really hard to bring you the products that we love that maybe we don't carry. So we do have affiliate links for those items below as well. So be sure to check those out. Um, I just wanna go ahead and get started. This project is one I'm really, really in love with. It's in that farmhouse style that's so trendy right now, the classic blacks and whites, really pretty neutral wood color. I'm gonna show you the finished product really quick. And it's in something that's really exciting to me anyway. It's pretty new to Studio R12 still. We are doing these personalized stencils. So as you can see here, it's gonna say the name, what year you were established, and where you're from. So there's so much about this that's personal. And I love personalized stencils. They make great wedding gifts. Um, they make super good housewarming gifts or just like birthday gifts, awesome. Also, they make beautiful personalized home decor, right? We all want to make our house feel like our home, our personal home. And personalized signs and personalized decor are a great way to do that. So that's one thing that I really love about this new stencil that's um, on Studio R12. So be sure you check out our personalized section. We're filling it out more and more every day. So be sure you just check in there as often as you can because we have new stuff coming into the personalized category. Just all the time, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so also I have noticed, guys, we've got a lot of really regular viewers, so if you're a regular viewer, go ahead and say, hey, there's some names I'm really starting to recognize when I go through and look at the comments later and when I watch with the recast as well. I'm starting to really recognize you guys and feel like we're almost friends, right? Um, but if you're new, be sure to say hi as well, because that's something else we've been noticing here at Studio R12. We have lots of new people in the comments every week. So I thought that that would be a really good opportunity to take it back to basics with the stencil and with the sign. So maybe if you're new to stenciling or maybe you're just new to our page, but I thought I would take it all the way back to some of the most basic techniques you can do so we can all just kind of start from the beginning together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. The first thing I have here is my round board. This is again from studior12.com. And I'm gonna take my 3M sanding block here. And if you can see, this type of material sometimes is gonna to come to you. It's just the way it works with some little fuzzies. Sometimes I like the fuzzies. Sometimes I think they kind of add the texture. But for this project, I don't really want it. So I'm gonna take my 3M and I'm just gonna and it's, I mean, that easy. Sometimes if you have a really fuzzy spot like that one right there, you might have to go over it twice, but super simple. Oop, that's all there is to it. So if you have gotten a board from Studio R12 and it's had the fuzzies on it, this is all you have to do to get rid of it. Really easy. Also, while I'm thinking about it and thinking about you commenting below, I wanna tell you about our prizes today. Every week when we come to you on Tuesdays at noon and again at 9 p.m. if you're watching our recast, we have giveaways. We always give away brush sets. I have two to give away today and these brushes are really the key to great stenciling. These are gonna be the stenciling that makes it a dream, a breeze, you're not gonna bleed under. If you have some of these brushes, tell everyone else in the comments how much you love them. That's usually what happens. So go ahead and just Explain to everyone how great it is to win these. Go ahead and comment and, and, and like and share so you can be entered to win one of these. I also have two stencils to give away today. I have this one right here that says Farm Sweet Farm. Look how cute that is and with the little leaves here. Oh, I love it. This is so sweet. It'll be so cute in the same style as well. And then we have this chicken. I love it. Farm Fresh Eggs. And I love that it's in a round. Okay, that is so cute. 
and it's got the little eggs here those are a fun detail you can do you can really get in there with some shading and things like that use some cool techniques for so we've got these two to give away and then two brush sets so be sure you're liking commenting and sharing so you can be entered to win guys just three easy things to do okay so now I'm gonna get started on this and while I'm getting started I'm also gonna to talk to you about where you can find us again our website is studior12.com and you can find us on Facebook if that's where you're watching right now if you're watching our live welcome um, if you're watching us on YouTube by the way you can catch us on YouTube go ahead and check us out on Facebook because you can watch these live and enter to win our giveaways um, if you're watching on Facebook, be sure you hop over to YouTube and click the bell so you guys can be in or so you get notified whenever we have new content, okay? We do that quite frequently. We've got a lot of Ask Carries coming for you. Sometimes we have home decor tips, so just check us out over on YouTube. A lot of speed videos, super awesome stuff going on. Okay, so I talked myself out of the paint. <laughs> Just talked too much before I even started painting. I promise we don't usually do this, guys. Okay, so I took my foam brush here and I made my paint in a line today. And I'm gonna load both sides and I'm just working it off so it's not too heavy, okay? But it's loaded on both sides. Now, I'm gonna paint in one direction. A lot of times with circular boards, people are really tempted to paint in a circle. You still wanna create lines, okay? So I'm gonna go this way just because up and down is easier for me. There's absolutely nothing wrong if you're a side to side person doing it this way. I'm just an up and down. I keep my lines straighter. And for a project that's this simple, um, without you know so many layers, you really wanna be sure you're working these nice straight lines. You wanna be careful. See, I'm not being as careful as I should have been because I'm talking, but about keeping your lines straight, okay? Who else loves the farmhouse? Simple, classic, black and white. I, I know it's a trend and I keep telling myself and my husband, you know, in eight years we'll all be watching TV and going, oh my gosh, that's so dated. But I just love it and I'm convinced it's timeless. <laughs> so if you love what I'm gonna call the timeless black and white, be sure you're letting us know in the comments. Or if you don't and you really like the more the reds in the farmhouse, let us know that too. We like to know what you guys like. Because I like to paint things in the colors that you know are relevant to our viewers. We like to paint what you guys like to see, right? Other thing about a project like this, it is so simple, but it's almost like the little black dress right so it's something that is so classic so easy you can throw it on and it looks great every time right so something like this just these simple colors simple sanding technique it's going to create really beautiful finished look okay so if you see how i'm working out towards my edges and then i'm going to come back and pull down into them and feather that back in. And that's keeping my edges from getting dirty. Sometimes I don't mind that. I'm not always as mindful of it as maybe I should be because I usually just paint my edges at the end and cover it up. But if you don't want to mess your edges, this is kind of how you do that. I'm also gonna toss this foam brush. It's falling apart on me. That happens sometimes. So I'm gonna just switch foam brushes here. I love a good foam brush. One thing too, just for a, a tip and trick on tools um, that we have learned about foam brushes is you wanna get one that is supported all the way with the dowel piece here, the handle. So actually, if I can show you that, that might be fun. So you see how the dowel goes all the way up that's what you want. That's how you can feel that it's a good foam brush, that there's still wood support in there. The ones that stop right here and it's just the plastic flexi, they're just going to bend and fall over on you. So just when you're looking for a good foam brush, that's what I look for. Um, just a fun little tip or trick for that. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to talk it dry. Oh, while I'm working, you can see I'm kind of making a mess on my silicone pad here. Excuse me. So I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit while I'm painting too. 
The silicone pad, super handy thing that we use here at Studio R12, and we thought we would go ahead and post an affiliate link for you guys so you could see, you know, that we use it here, how great it is. We thought we'd go ahead and share it with you um, as well, even though we can't carry it, just because we can't carry everything, right? Um, anyway, it's super great because it keeps my work surface or whatever I'm working on, it keeps it clean. So like when I was painting at home, when I lived with my parents, it would have been really handy to have one of these because I used to have to paint on my mom's dining room table and it was always <laughs> it was a little stressful. <laughs> She did not like if I would get paint on her wood dining room table. Understandably. So this will protect whatever you're painting on. And it's so easy to clean. Um, there's a few ways you can do it. We have thrown this one in the washer. The actual washing machine. And it's come pretty clean. It's not um, the most effective method. But it will work. I also have a bristle right there. Just stray bristle. I got it out. Um, anyway. You can do that, or one thing we do here is we usually use like an all-purpose cleaner, spray the silicone, let it sit for a minute or two, and then wipe it down with just a sponge, and then we usually we dry it. Now, if I'm painting something really small, I've not made a big, big mess. I kind of tested on this. I just had like a little scuff of paint and here, maybe you really just like it to look neat and clean so that it doesn't look messy. I just took a wet paper towel and just scrubbed it off. It's just acrylic paint, so it will just kind of peel off. So there's lots of ways to get this thing clean and keep your work area looking nice, right? Okay, keeping my lines nice and straight, even here. I think that's good. I don't need perfectly flat coverage because I'm going to be sanding. I do want to make sure I get some of this. Okay, there we go. All right. I'm going to put my brush here in the water and I'm going to blow dry. So bear with me while I'm doing this. This is a really good opportunity to like, share, and comment to be entered to win one of our giveaways today. I'm going to be giving away two brush sets, and I have two stencils for our grand prize winners. So get those comments, likes, and shares in now while I'm blow drying. to you about when you know your paint is dry. You know it's dry when it's not cold to the touch. So you know it's dry all the way underneath. And you know it's dry when you're not getting stuff up on your hands, right? And when it stops looking glossy. We're using matte paint here. That's what we always use here at Studio R12 unless it's something special. But typically we're using a matte paint. So you're looking for no shine, nice flat look, okay? All right, now for this project. I'm gonna take my sanding block. And I have this 3M sand block here. Fits really nice in your hand. It's got some weight behind it. I don't know if you can like hear how solid that is when I just drop it. It's heavy duty sanding block, okay? And I've got this sanding tape over here. It's a 60 grit, okay? And I'm gonna just run it over. Straight lines. One thing about sanding is if you want to go down really dig in deep you're gonna to have to use pressure okay pressure is what's going to strip the paint and that's why these sanding blocks that we use here are actually a really great tool because they have some weight behind them so it's, it kind of helps you with that pressure it gives you a little bit of an added oomph. 
Makes you not have to work as hard as you would if you were just using sandpaper in your hand, okay? Whoop. My board's scooting away. I gotta keep my hand on it here. Look how pretty that is. Just that natural antiquing where the paint itself just kind of wants to come off. So pretty. I love it. I feel like I just sounded like the Grinch. I don't, I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. So I flipped my board around because it's a lot easier since I'm right-handed to not be trying to reach and sand straight. So I just flipped my board because it's easier to flip my board than change hands, right? Or left. Okay, I'm full of terrible jokes today. All right, guys. Okay. I think I really like that. All right. So you're just gonna sand until you like it. So whether you want to take off a lot and you want it to be really, really brown coming through, or whether you want a little bit more white, that's gonna be up to you. It's personal preference. I, I like where this is at right now. I think this is really pretty. There's just a good balance for me of kind of the heavy spots, good feathered edges. I'm gonna go in and show you a little, a little something up here. If you wanna take off just a little bit of paint in just an area, I'm gonna go kind of not on the edge, but just with the edge of my sander. Just kind of like that. I'm going to go do one down here as well. And then I'm going to feather over that one with the rest of my sander to kind of blend it in. It was a little bit too much. I see kind of one right here that wants to happen. Yeah. And if you, I'm not pressing really hard right now, I'm just kind of going back and forth over the same areas and letting the paint kind of decide where it's gonna come off. That sounds kind of silly maybe, but. Okay. Now, I really love that. So this project here that is my original that I'm basing it off of, it doesn't have big, big nicks like that. It has some thinner spots, but it's got more white than this, okay? I really like this project, but maybe you didn't, right? Maybe you got it to this stage and you don't love it. So here's what you're gonna do. Paint is your best friend. This is my paint drawer, not my brush drawer. So you're gonna get one of these foam brushes back out, go back into your white paint. You're just gonna buff it out. And you just kind of start over. Not totally, of course, but just kind of letting. It happen this way. So you can kind of go a lot of ways with just this one easy, I think it's easy technique. It's a, it's, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. I don't want to say that you have a perfect time starting out. I don't think you should have any trouble, but if you do, don't feel bad. We all struggle sometimes. And at Studio R12, we typically have this saying that we say when, especially when things aren't working out, we say paint it till it's pretty. So don't get frustrated, don't scrap it. Just keep erasing or redoing with your paint until you love it. Keep layering until it's what you wanted it to be. Okay. So this is a little bit closer to what's going on here, but it's missing some scratch now. So what I'm gonna do is just lay this on here and I'm gonna just, well, even while it's wet, this is called wet sanding. It's a whole nother technique, but I'm not gonna get in too much today. I'm not gonna use like the whole technique. I'm just gonna buff out the lines I made with my brush. Kind of.
Yeah, so that right there is a whole lot closer in terms of the white brown balance to this right here. So this is what I'm gonna go with. Now, again, this is up to personal preference. So if you loved how much brown was coming through before, you don't have to go back over it with this white. That just helps you find balance. Knowing that you can go back over it will really help you be sure you find a proper balance for your preference for each project. Okay, so now I have my personalized Studio R12 stencil. I'm gonna make sure it's straight here. It does line up really easily, but because it's a circle, if you're not paying attention, you can be wobble jawed. So just being sure I'm straight on, my name is straight. I'm gonna take your tape. And since this is cut to a circle and my board is a circle as well, taping is so simple. That's one fabulous thing about our Studio R12 stencils and surfaces. When you buy them together, they fit exactly. So it takes a lot of the headache out of lining up and matching up your stencil. If you have bought a surface from Studio R12, let us know that in the comments. We love to hear things like that from you. Or if you have gotten a personalized stencil, let us know about that as well. Okay. Ooh, I love when my work area looks like this. Looks like it's dusty, it's got sawdust. It looks like I really got in there. I love that. Okay, makes me happy. I need black. I need black paint. These pants are killing me. I'm gonna keep pulling up my pants. I just had a baby and I bought pants because I thought I would need a bigger size and fit right. Sorry. Sorry, I keep messing, pulling my pants up, but it's probably better that way. I'm rambling about things that are way too personal. We're going to paint now. Sorry, guys. Welcome. Okay, so I've dipped into my paint here. I've got way too much on my brush. I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to roll off on both sides today because I really dunked my brush. So if you can see this side, is really great. It's matte, but this side's still glossy and gloopy, so I'm gonna roll it off as well. And I'm just gonna keep working my brush till I get that dusty color right there. And this whole stencil today is gonna be painted black. So I'm just gonna show you some basic stenciling stuff we've got going on. You're just gonna swirl. So simple. And you really don't need a lot of paint when you're stenciling. That's one of the big keys. I would say the two biggest factors for me in terms of making a stencil work for you, well, let's say three, because factor number one is a quality stencil. You wanna be sure you're working with a quality product. Um, that that kind of goes in with this, the other things as well. You wanna be sure the brush you're using is not only the right brush, but a quality brush, that it's not gonna shed all over the place or you know, kind of make a mess or hold paint too tightly. So we have what I think are really great quality brushes for stenciling. And I know a lot of people who have purchased them, I, I see that in the comments so frequently, people are like, yes, those brushes are the best. And really they are. I think our dome brushes are awesome. Um, they do a really great job. I know that uh, Patty has had this company for quite a few years and she spent a long time looking for the perfect dome brush to bring to our customers that really does the job. So we found one and we just wanna share it with you. So be sure you're liking, commenting, and sharing so you can be entered to win. Maybe you could win some of our brushes. They do come in multiple sizes, which is really great for a lot of our stencils. The other thing that I would say is quality paint. Um, you wanna be sure you're using a paint that's not too thin, okay? You wanna be sure you have a paint that's got some substance to it because that's gonna keep it from running under your stencil without permission. And then the other thing I would say that's really important is knowing that you're gonna build and build and build. So not using too much paint initially on any of your layers is really gonna help make sure your project comes out crisp and beautiful every time. Okay, so even just now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I just did. I forget sometimes as I'm working to tell you what's going on. So I have this big glob of paint right here. This is wet. So I can touch that and pick paint up on my fingers. I'll do it here with my pinky so you can see. 
That also means that I can touch my brush to it and just wet my brush one more time. So my brush wasn't completely out of paint, but it was kind of starting to dry. So instead of adding more paint to my brush, I kind of touch into this wet spot here and that gives my brush just a little bit. It just breathes a little bit of life into it without overloading it, okay? That's just something I do sometimes when I notice that maybe my brush isn't out of paint. It's just drying because I'm taking a while moving around or I'm talking. I'm going to ask one of my favorite questions. I just love to see see the answers to this. Where are you guys from? If you can see here on our stencil, we are from Gal Police, Ohio. Um, I love to see all, all the places you guys come from near and far. So cool to me. We have viewers and stencil fans from all over, not only the United States, I've seen some people from Canada on there. That's awesome. That really makes me excited. So be sure to share where you're from and also share how you found us. I'm, I'm always interested in that as well. So did you stumble on us on social medias? Did you find our website? I don't know. Tell us how you found us. We get really excited about that. Okay. All right. So see how quickly this project is really kind of coming together. Just this one coat of paint. Oh, too much, too much, too much. All right, so that's a really good example right here. It's too much paint on my brush. It was way too dark. I don't know if you can see how much more of the dark spots, the variance is from here. I don't know if you can really tell that on the camera, but it's darker in general right there. And I can see some brush stroke in my letter and I shouldn't really see a lot of that. So part of the problem is my paper towel, okay? A, it's pretty saturated so it's not gonna soak up as much. And B, I can't really see what I'm doing because there's so much black all over it. So what I'm gonna do is open it up, fold it this way and turn it over. And now I can kind of see what we're working with. So that's more what we wanna see. Okay, better, that's much better. It's that working that will keep you from bleeding. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And I am holding down this line right here. This is a place if you like to stipple, this is great for stippling. Um, I want to keep doing what's most natural to me, and that is to swirl. So I'm going to just keep doing it this way. I don't mind to get my fingers dirty. Actually, sometimes like when I have a little paint on my hands, I feel like it looks like I've done work today. You know what I mean? Or it looks like I've created something and I love that feeling. I love the feeling of having created something. Um, that's why I love to paint and love to stencil. Ooh, that's fun. Tell me why you love stenciling. How did you get into it? Why do you love it? How does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I've completed something really peaceful and settled. I don't know, maybe that sounds silly, but that's how it makes me feel. So share that with you. I'm a feelings person in case you can't tell. that personality type thing. I'm one of those emotional feeler people. Okay. And as I am working here, I'm seeing something fun. Ooh. Getting distracted by my own thoughts. I thought I lined the stencil up right. And while it's not exactly wrong, it's just a little wrong. So I'm going to lift this up and show you. You can see it's so faint. I'm going to make it darker just so you can see it. So you can see my mistakes. Right here along this edge. I don't know. Can we get a good, is that a good shot of that? How dark this is right here because I miss lining it up just a hair. It's really not that big of a deal, except for the fact that black and white are so high contrast. So I really don't wanna leave that. 
So I'm gonna show you how to fix it. We call those ghost lines. Um, that happens anytime you go off your stencil onto your board. It's a ghost line is what you might hear it referred to as. So we just have a ton of stuff. It's, I see it. Oh my gosh, thanks Patty. It's live. Welcome to Studio R12. Okay, we can't keep it together. All right. Anyway, this is just one of these white erasers. Okay, so I'm gonna take this white eraser, I'm gonna dip it in my water just a little bit, and I'm just gonna erase. And it will take up any paint off up to like five minutes of dry time. Now I would say that that was such, such thin paint, I wouldn't risk leaving it for the five minutes. I would probably just, like I, like I did, as soon as I saw it, I would go for it because I really don't want it there. Yeah, I'm just gonna wipe that off. And look how good that came off. There's no more black there. So super simple, fun little trick, by the way, just cool little thing. White eraser, we call these like the, I can't remember, pen eraser, click erasers. Yeah, that's what this is right here. It says it on there. Should just read. It says click eraser. So that's what this one is, is a click eraser. And you can just take off little mistakes like that like they never even happened, okay? All right, gotta keep going. So for this project, we could call, you know, we might call it here in just a second, but I would go ahead and do two coats just so I got really true. So I'm just gonna dust over this Rawlinson and show you. Let's do Rawlinson family. So I can show you one, two, and three coats. And we can just look at that. That'll be fun. The coats is really what's gonna make your paint um, opaque, nice and true, right, dark, however you wanna say it. The more coats you do, usually up to about three, once you get three, depending on the color, three to four coats, you're not gonna see much darker. But that's what's gonna make your paint really be true colored, right? Really nice and dark. You're not gonna see background through it. But sometimes that's nice. So it just depends on what look you wanna go for. Okay, we're getting there. I love this stencil. If you are a fan of the personalized stencil, let us know and tell me what you would do with a personalized stencil. Are you like a, you'd make them for yourself? Would you give them, do you have someone in mind you'd love to give them as a gift to? Tell me what you would do if you, I mean, it's not our giveaway this week, but tell me what you would do if you won a personalized stencil. Who would you give it to? Let us know in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna go for a third coat over Rollinson. And I've got a little spot here on my L that I must have gotten too wet and it didn't dry completely. So this is where I'm gonna use stippling. I'm just gonna stipple over that spot to patch it so I don't keep running, rubbing paint off of it, okay? It's a good time to just use the stippling technique. It's when you kinda need to patch it's really helpful. Here on the W, I've kind of done the same thing. That's just because I've worked over it so quickly. I didn't let probably the very bottom layer dry in some places. Okay, but it's not bad to fix. All right, so let's go ahead and take this off and we're gonna look at one coat versus two versus three, okay? Just so you guys can kind of see the difference there. Oh, and I have another little ghost line we can fix right here on my S. I must have moved my stencil at some point. That's fine. All right. Got way too much eraser there. All right, here we go. It's gone. That's my favorite. Love it. Okay, right here. Honestly, that S must have really wiggled on me. Okay. So if you can see here, that's one, two, three coats. So for this project, it looks like when they did the complete thing, they did three coats over the whole bit. 
Um, I just want to show you today a little bit on how to stencil and kind of how to do a really easy background that turns out great every time and looks great with so many different types and styles of stencils. You could do this with any color you wanted. It doesn't have to be a classic black and white. This style of sanding and that kind of thing looks great with any color you want. So really that's up to you. It's a great thing about stenciling is it's totally customizable. Okay guys, well, thanks for watching. Again, if you're checking us out on YouTube, go to Facebook so you can see these live and be entered to win our giveaways. I have two brush sets given away today and a grand prize of these two adorable stencils. I have the Farm Fresh with the eggs and I have Farm Sweet Farm with these little like leafy laurel things. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay. So be sure you're commenting, liking, and sharing if you're on Facebook, even if you're at the recast. I think people don't always realize you can still be entered to win the giveaway for the recast as well. So whether you're joining us at 12 or at 9, um, be sure to like, comment, and share to be entered. Just a quick reminder as well, we do these every Tuesday. So be sure you join in and we'll see you next week.